quarantine securities on our platform. So to be clear, uh, customers could still sell uh, those securities if they had positions in them. And they could also trade in the thousands of other securities on our platform. So uh, it was a difficult decision. Um, and, uh, and, and that's what we had to do as part of normal operations. But explain then, why did you do this? What, did, did the SEC call you and tell you you had to do this? Was there a problem inside the company in terms of liquidity, in terms of the amount of deposits that you had uh, to, to put in, in front of the exchanges? What led to this? Sure, and let me, let me explain exactly how this works. Um, oh, first of all, I want to address some of the misinformation that's been out there because there's a lot of it. Um, we absolutely did not do this at the direction of any market maker or hedge fund uh, or anyone we route to or other market participants. Uh, the reason we did it was because uh, Robinhood is a brokerage firm. Uh, we have lots of financial requirements, including SEC net capital requirements and clearinghouse deposits. So that's money that we have to deposit at various clearinghouses. So some of these requirements uh, fluctuate quite a bit based on volatility in the markets, and they can be substantial in the current environment where there's a lot of volatility and a lot of concentrated activity in uh, these names that have been going viral on social media. So we're really in unprecedented times, and in order to protect the firm and protect our customers, uh, we had to limit buying in these in these stocks. And to be absolutely clear, it, sound, yeah, it sounds wasn't, to, go ahead. But, but it it sounds to me though that you're suggesting that there was a liquidity problem uh, inside the firm, and, and my question about that then raises all sorts of new questions about whether there's a systemic issue uh, underneath the system and underneath the company unto itself. No, no there, there was no li liquidity problem. And to be clear, this was done preemptively. So we did this proactively uh, and thousands of other securities remain tradable on the platform. Customers that held these positions um, were able to sell them. And we're doing what we can to allow uh, buying and to remove these restrictions in the morning. Um, but also, uh, you might have seen Robinhood has been the number one app in the, in the app store overall. So we have seen unprecedented uh, interest due to the fact that finance has been culturally irrelevant in a way that hasn't been before, and these stocks are going viral on social media. And I think it's really interesting to juxtapose against some of the other questions that we've been having uh, before this. Of course, Robinhood stands for, for everyday investors. From the very beginning, we have stood for investors opening up access and giving them the ability to trade commission-free in whatever they want. Um, and we've gotten a lot of criticism that, you know, maybe uh, there should be more restrictions. So it pains us to have had to impose these restrictions, and we're going to do what we can to uh, enable trading but in these stocks. In the, yeah. But what do you tell the what do you tell the Robinhood investor who says, "Look at the screen, I'm losing money. You are not allowing me to buy this, and by the way, I'm going to have to sell it for less money because of what you did." Well, to, to be clear. Um, we're not allowing people to buy it, but they can sell uh, the positions that they have. Um, and, you know, I feel a little bit, I know how Clorox and Lysol felt in the pandemic when they were running out of uh, hand sanitizer and, um, and supplies. We, we just haven't seen this level of concentrated interest market-wide in a small number of names before. So. Uh, we're doing, we understand our customers are upset. We're doing what we can to re enable buying in these names. And we stand with our customers. We stand for uh, the everyday investor. And we do believe that you should be able to buy and sell the stocks that, uh, that you want to, uh, subject to all requirements. And that's what we're going to, that's what we're working day in and day out to make possible. What do you say to, to the customer who says, look, Maybe I shouldn't be on Robinhood anymore. If they're going to not, they're going to shut me out right when I when I need to, to be on the service. Maybe I should go to an alternative service. 
Look, we, we realize customers are upset with this. Uh, it, it was not an easy decision. Um, ultimately, the team uh, made the correct decision here. So uh, what we can do is move forward, focus on giving customers the most stable and reliable platform going forward. Um, and we've, we've invested a lot in that, and we've actually seen some great progress in uh, taking all the steps we can to make sure customers can buy the securities that they want to buy without restrictions in the future. When you look at the trading in these stocks over the past several days, do you think they're divorced from reality? Are you concerned that the investors that are involved in this are, are doing these things for reasons that they fully understand and they fully understand the risks involved? Look, when I, I'm, I'm obviously um, a big believer in more education. I want to make sure that we give customers all the tools and educational resources that we could possibly give them. Um, this is, is really about access. Um, and access is something I've been super strong about from the very beginning in the face of a lot of criticism and questions about whether we should be granting people access in the first place. So yes, I think people need to be informed and need to be educated. Uh, we do want to give them the ability to do that. But I also believe that uh, access is a very powerful thing. The more individual investors have access to the markets, the better off we will be. And we're going to work tirelessly day in and day out to make sure customers have that access. It's in the name. It's everything we stand for. Vlad, can you uh, walk us in? Yeah, Andrew, thank you. Um, and, and Vlad, thanks for being on CNBC. Can you walk us through the moment in which you, you realized that you needed to do this in order to have the capital? I mean, you drew on credit lines. We've confirmed that, and you can confirm that to us directly. Um, at what point did you say, you know, the options volume is just crazy, uh, the stock volume is crazy, and we need to do this? It sounds like something you should have been able to figure out prior to today. Well, this is, it's, it's interesting because I, I don't remember a time in the past where social media and the financial system have intersected in such a direct way. So things can go viral on social media and that can lead to virality in the financial markets. Like I mentioned before, Robin has been number one on the App Store for the last several days and we've never been number one on the App Store before. So I don't think uh, anyone could have anticipated that uh, that this would happen. Um, and in terms of the credit lines, you mentioned that, that was really a proactive measure. As I mentioned earlier in the conversation, the deposit requirements uh, that we have at the various clearing houses govern how much we can allow customers to buy some of these stocks. So obviously, in line with our mission and what we want to do, we want to put ourselves in a position to allow our customers to be as unrestricted as possible in accordance with the requirements and the regulations. So we pulled those credit lines so that we could um, we could maximize within reason uh, the, the funds we have to uh, deposit at clearing houses. Uh, final question, and we only really have uh, 30 seconds at this point, um, and I mean, we'll continue this conversation on Squawk Box tomorrow, but the question I would ask you is, you said you're going to start allowing buying tomorrow. What happens if it triggers whatever system triggered today where you have to stop it? Are you anticipating that? Are you doing anything in the head of that prospect? Yeah, we're doing a lot of things. You know, we, we want to obviously allow buying safely uh, for the firm and for the customers. And the teams have been working very, very hard. Um, they were already working very hard dealing with the unprecedented uh, uh, you know, volumes and uh, the equity volumes and the unique situation we've been in. So we want to do that safely. We want to be clear in the communications. And I, I own that you know, we should have been out there a little bit sooner. Uh, the team's been working very hard. Um, and uh, people, uh, people are doing what they can for our customers. And I'm very proud of the, the work that the team is doing and has done. Glad we appreciate you joining us. Uh, we will continue this conversation uh, and uh, we will air more of it.